Hey guys, it's Mike. Recently I picked up this 40 inch Samsung television to use as a computer monitor. Now, before you say it, yes, very few televisions can be used as an effective computer monitor. There's uh, issues with uh, gamma color, um, refresh rates. This is one of the exceptions to the rule. I'll put the model number down below and I'm eventually going to do a review on this. I've had it for a couple days now. Um, but it has a beautiful picture. It's got a decent refresh rate and it replaced the two 24 inch monitors that you've seen sitting over here for a very long time so I couldn't be happier with it. I'm just so thrilled and it's working great. Now one of the side effects of it or one of the side benefits is this thing's actually got a tuner in it so I was always curious about um, what, what, kind of tune, what, what kind of programming can I get over the air uh, with an antenna. So I went out and I bought a, um, it's only 40 bucks, this RCA amplified antenna. I put a link to that below also and I plugged it into the TV and it's a smart TV so it went through and scanned all my channels and it came back and says you you are able to receive 49 channels and I went through and I'm probably actually able to view and enjoy a good 45 channels which surprised me to no end. Now here's the bigger surprise. My normal broadcast system is direct TV. I've got the Hopper DVR. I absolutely love it. I've been talking about it for a while. But like any subscription cable service or satellite service, it gets expensive. I'm paying about $140 a month in addition to my internet bill. Um, so I turned on the antenna, which is just sitting on the desk behind this monitor. I didn't do anything special, like mount it outside or anything. And the picture is actually better and clearer than what I'm getting over Dish Network. Now, there's no 4K channels. There's no 4K broadcast yet. But I'm getting pretty much all of them in 1080 uh, high def. To me, that was pretty amazing. So then I'm starting to think, and I'm getting angry at myself. What am I being paying for uh, all this money for Dish for for all these years? Um, and I'll go through some of the cost savings benefits. So what I decided to do was look at what am I actually getting from Dish, and what can I replace with broadcast TV and maybe an assortment of streaming services? What would my actual savings be, and will it work? So I'm going to start this experiment. Now, one of the things that I am that I would miss absolutely about my uh, DISH network would be the DVR, the ability to record programs. It records everything on prime time. In addition, it's got the ability to skip the commercials, although I think they, it used to be 24 hours, now they moved it out a week due to some agreement with some of the broadcasters, so that's less of a benefit than it used to be. A third benefit is I can use my Amazon Echo to tell it to change the channels, and I should probably do a video on that. That works sort of, not really sometimes. Um, so I'll write that off as maybe a non-benefit. But the one benefit I don't want to give up because I'm never home is the ability to DVR all my shows and then go back and watch them. So as you all know, I also run a Plex server as part of my Unraid server. So see where I'm going with this? Uh, Plex has the ability to um, watch live TV. You need to buy an external tuner, and there's a, a list of supported ones. Um, so I'm going to go down to Best Buy. There's one down there. Uh, that has the ability to tune in four programs at once. Uh, I'm going to pick that up. It costs $150, and I'm going to hook it up to my Unraid server. And I'm going to see how well this works, and I'm going to run it in parallel with my dish for a month or two. And at the end of that, I'm going to decide whether I want to cut the cord or not, because the savings are substantial. I mean, just on the broadcast alone, $140 a month for dish, versus if I have to, <clears throat> if I pay the most expensive on the Plex side for the for the guide and everything, you need to Plex Premium. That's five dollars a month, hundred forty-five dollars a month. That's one hundred thirty-five dollars a month savings right there, assuming I can get everything I want from my network televisions. Okay. Now the streaming services, that some of which I already pay for. I've already paid for Netflix, so that's a wash. Um, I already pay for CBS All Access at least so long as Star Trek's on, and I'll probably cancel that at the end of the season, um, and I would be paying that either way. Uh, so I'll see where the gaps are. Maybe I'll need another streaming service like, uh, for example, uh, PS View or, um, or Sling TV. But we'll see. So I'm going to start this experiment. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go pick up that tuner. I'm going to install it on my server. I'm going to come back and I'll tell you how it works in a couple weeks, alright? So this is Mike and let's get started with this experiment. Take care. So my goals in this project. First was to reduce the expenses of my monthly satellite subscription. I'm easily paying right now about $140, $150 a month just to get broadcast TV. And best I can tell, I'm the only one in this house that watches it, uh, mostly for sports. Uh, I do like broadcast news, but that's a lot of money. As much as I like Dish and as high quality as it is, 
I'd prefer to reduce that expense and put that money in the bank. And I'll talk a little bit more about the possible savings uh, as we go forward with this. <clears throat> Second, I'd like the ability to record a high definition quality broadcast. Basically your network shows that come on every week. Uh, right now the DVR tapes them and I generally catch up on weekends when I'm home. As you know, I travel during the week, so time shifting is important to me. Uh, the family typically sits around and we watch these shows together on a weekend. So I'd like to be able to tape that. Uh, third, I'd like to retain access to most of the shows I watch, meaning watch them later or watch them when I'm on the road when I'm traveling. Uh, fourth, and this is becoming less important in my life as it goes on, I like the ability to watch sports. I'm an NFL fan, I'm a hockey fan, I'm definitely a baseball fan, uh, more and more a soccer fan. It would be nice if I could still keep my sports without paying an exorbitant fee for cable. We'll see if that works. Uh, the ability to time shift record programs, as I was mentioning earlier, love to be able to watch it later, not necessarily when it's on. Uh, the ability to skip commercials would be nice. As you know, the Dish Hopper makes that very, very easy to do. Uh, going into this project, I'm not sure if that will remain easy to do, so we'll see. I'd like it to be easy to use. In other words, I'd like anybody in my family to be able to pick up a remote control and tune into something and select a program and play it. Whether that interface ends up being a Amazon Fire, uh, Apple TV, or a PS4 remains to be seen, but that's generally the goal there. And lastly, I'd like to utilize any existing hardware I've got. Currently, I do have a PS4. It'd be great to be able to use that. We've got some Chromecast, so we could broadcast from a tablet. Um, and I've got a Unraid 6 server, which you guys have seen many times, uh, which has a Plex server running on it. So maybe there's a way I can leverage that. So. Let's move forward. So some ideas I had. One was looking at a high definition antenna. The beauty of this is these things are not very expensive. I've actually never used one before. I've been on satellite and cable for so long. Uh, I don't think I've used an antenna since I was like a teenager. The old rabbit ears. So I have no idea if that was going to work or not. But you can pick, typically pick up an amplified antenna that works all the way out in the suburbs. Uh, an indoor antenna nonetheless for roughly 40 bucks. And I'll show you the one I picked up and we'll see how that worked out. The beauty of that is over the airwaves are absolutely free. You don't have a monthly subscription. You just pick up the signal over the air. And as I found out as I'm going through this experiment, um, the picture is actually higher quality than satellite. And the main reason for that is satellite tends to compress the bandwidth because they got so many channels. Cable tends to compress the bandwidth. Over the air is just streaming high quality. Uh, and that makes its own challenges too, as we'll see going forward. Another option is a streaming service. Now this would be my second choice if, this, if the antenna doesn't work out, uh, because there is a cost involved, and some of the streaming services out there today are PS View, Sling TV, Hulu. Um, sometimes they call them skinny bundles, skinny bundles, and the reason for that is when you buy satellite TV or cable TV, they make you buy these packages. So they'll advertise it. You get 200 channels. Well, truth be told, you're probably going to watch about a quarter of that, if that many. So the rest are just kind of included, and you got to take them. Okay, with skinny bundles, you can typically pick less channels and pay, of course, less money for it. Um, and I've seen some comparisons where they say, well, you're technically paying more per channel because you're getting less channels. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if I'm actually watching those channels. So you're going to get your broadcast networks. You might get CNN for your news. You might get ESPN. Uh, maybe Food Network or Disney Channel. And that's kind of nice. And two of the channels I do watch actually uh, on cable are Do It Yourself Network and the Food Network. Um, occasionally I'll watch um, AMC for Walking Dead. So I may end up having to go with the streaming service anyway, but as of this moment, I haven't, I haven't considered that. But that's another option here. Uh, typically, they do have more restrictions than satellite or cable as far as your ability to tape things. So, in the case of like Sling and the case of PS View, you've got a DVR in the cloud. Um, unlike a hard drive sitting in a DVR in your house, uh, they put restrictions on how long you can keep that. So, for example, PS View, I think you can only keep it for uh, 30 days. Whereas, I think Sling TV, uh, you have up to a certain number of megabytes. But you can't put everything in the cloud. They restrict what you can tape, for example, <clears throat> and where you can watch it. 
So one of the things I said I wanted to do early on was I want to try to utilize this Unraid server, which has got my Plex server running on it. Main reason being is it's already in my house. It's already running, so it's already burning the electricity. Uh, I know it supports hardware such as uh, an HD home run tuner. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like, and I'll put some links below. Uh, and an HD antenna. So the HD home run tuner I bought supports taping or supports tuning four different channels at once. Uh, and then I hook up any high definition antenna to it. So the tuner itself was $149 and the antenna was another $40. So I'm under $200 right now to basically enable my Plex server to tape live TV. Now for software, I've already got a functional Plex server. I do need to subscribe to the, Pro the Plex Pass, which allows me to get TV listings and the ability to record shows. And that's an extra $5 a month. So I figured I'd start this experiment. I'd see if it works because uh, it's got some potential savings, right? And if it doesn't work, I can always return the hardware and find another option. Okay, another option here for getting your programming would be dedicated streaming services. This would include services such as Netflix, which almost everybody's got at this point, uh, CBS All Access, HBO Go, I believe NBC's got an app, Disney's coming out with an app, uh, and basically these are services that promote their own properties, uh, their own programming. Um, Netflix is started off as basically a consolidation of a bunch of older movies and uh, a DVD replacement service and it's evolved into producing their own content. Uh, Amazon Video, that's another one that's producing their own content now as well, both TV shows and movies. Uh, HBO has been doing that for a long time. Uh, and whether you need these or not depends on how many shows you watch. So for me, uh, CBS All Access just launched uh, an exclusive uh, Star Trek show that you have to have all access to see, at least in the United States, outside the United States. It's on Netflix. Um, but I did look, and a majority of the shows that my family and I watch are actually on CBS. So for us, CBS All Access makes sense. And it also means because you can stream all these shows and they've got their entire catalog on there, I don't necessarily need to worry about recording CBS All Access shows. Uh, they're just available to me. HBO, I typically like to watch Westworld, and my son likes to watch Game of Thrones. Uh, I haven't gotten into it yet. I might try it. But typically when Westworld is being broadcast, I will subscribe to HBO Go, uh, and I usually cancel my subscription thereafter. And you can probably do that for any of these services if there's a, if there's a particular program you like that's only in production a certain time of the year. And that's kind of nice because if you're on cable or satellite, you're under a contract. You can't just turn it off as you need it. Whereas with these services, you can kind of flip them on and flip them off um, as, as required. Um, now, the other point I was going to make with this is you're probably paying for some of these anyway, even if you have cattle, cattle like, even if you have cable or satellite. Uh, so it's not like it's going to cost you anything extra for that. For example, like I said, uh, I turn on HBO Go during Westworld, uh, whether or not I have... Um, uh, Dish Network or not. Uh, the one other thing I do want to point out with these services, for example, CBS All Access, you can certainly get the shows uh, that you want to watch on that, but typically you're not going to see them at the same time they're being broadcast. So, for example, if you want to watch Blue Bloods, and I forget what time it is, but let's just assume Thursday at 8 p.m., um, you're not going to see it Thursday at 8 p.m. It may come out before the end of the day on Thursday. Uh, before midnight, but more than likely you're going to be tuning into it on Friday. In my case, it's not a big deal because I typically wait till the weekends to catch up on my shows anyway. I'm far too busy during the week to be dealing with when things are actually on. Now, as I've been mentioning a few times now, what I'm trying to do here is save money. So I'm going to replace my Dish Network with something else that's going to get me the programming I need, not necessarily all the same programming, but it's going to get me the program I need with the benefit of cost savings at the end of every month. Um, of course, when you pay less, you're going to get less. So some of the trade-offs you're going to get. Uh, typically, your packaged cable satellite uh, with a home home DVR is going to be very easy to use. You're going to walk in any room, hit a remote, it's going to turn on. You're going to find a show you want. You're going to either play it live or you're going to play a recording or you're going to program it to tape something. Uh, sometimes these whole home DVRs have connections into things like Netflix and YouTube. Um, so it depends. Are you, are you willing to give up a little bit of ease of use 
uh, to save some money. Okay, how technical are you? Uh, how technical do you have to be? That's some of the things we're going to explore here. But only you can decide if it's worth it. And I guess part of it's going to come down to how much am I really going to save? So let's go ahead and look at the savings we're going to do here. So there's all sorts of ways you can calculate your savings, but one great thing is there, there's all these savings calculators for cutting the cord uh, on the internet. You can just Google cord cutting savings calculators. I just put a link up here to one that I've used myself to do this calculation. So and that's at cordcutting.com forward slash cord dash cutting dash calculator. So let's look and see what that came up for my particular use case. So let's look first at the absolute best case scenario. Uh, what is the most I can save by doing this? So in this case here, let's say I completely cut out Dish Network, but I still got to obviously keep my internet connection. Now in my case, my internet connection is not bundled with my television package anyway, because I do have Dish Network as my television provider, and I use Charter Communications as my internet provider. Uh, if I was using Charter Communications for both television and internet, uh, my costs would um, increase on my internet because I would have gotten a discounted bundle, but I'm not getting that discount anyway. So my current monthly expenses for both television and internet, just the Dish Network part, is $210 per month. So that includes my uh, cable bill plus my $70 per month uh, internet bill. So if I cut out the Dish, uh, I drop down immediately from $210 a month down to $70 a month. So that cost, the internet cost, is, stays the same, but I need that in order to, uh, to do any kind of streaming services anyway. So I already subscribed to Amazon Prime, which is an additional $8.25 a month. I already subscribed to CBS All Access, which is $10 a month, and Netflix for an additional $10 a month. Those costs stay the same. Um, I'm going to continue to subscribe to those. I have to add an additional $5 a month for a Plex Pass subscription. Now... With the uh, HD Home Run Tuner and the HD Antenna, that was an initial expense of $190, but that's not recurring. That's done. That's spent. There's no additional uh, expense to that. So the total savings uh, after all these changes, assuming I cancel DISH, uh, is $106.76 per month or $1,281.12 per year. That's pretty significant, and if, especially if you multiply it over 10 years, and if you think about it, how long you've had cable, that's not really that long, because I've been in this house now almost that long, and I've had Dish Network the whole time. So over 10 years, your savings are $12,811.20. Now, if you take that money and you actually, instead of spending it on something else, if you actually take that savings and put it into a savings account, that's a pretty nice chunk of change you could put in the bank just by saving money here. And things, for example, like your HD antenna and your home run tuner, they're not going to go uh, up in cost every month like your dish bill. So you're basically fixing your costs. You're probably going to see some increase over 10 years in your cable bill. For example, the last 10 years, my cable bill has gone from $55 to $70. Uh, Prime's been pretty much the same so far. Uh, all access I just got. And Netflix has gone from $8 to $10. So you got to have nominal increases there. So now let's look at, let's say the antenna doesn't work out, the high def antenna. Let's say I want to go with a streaming service. And the one I seem to be favoring the most right now is uh, PlayStation View. And by the way, you don't need a PlayStation for it. It also plays, I believe, on an Amazon Fire TV. Um, off your iPad, you can Chromecast it. But one of the things, what benefit would I get over an antenna? And maybe I would want to use it in addition to an antenna. Uh, I would get things like Food Network, Do-It-Yourself Network, ESPN, CNN for news. And by the way, you can stream a lot of news, CNN and stuff, without necessarily getting a subscription. I got a smart TV that actually does that. Um, but it also adds things like cloud DVR services. And the thing that makes it more significant to me, and why I like PS View over things like Sling TV, is it's got a multi-view split screen, which... If you're, if you're watching sports, that might be helpful if you want to watch a couple games at once. Uh, of course, those particular benefits come at an increased cost. Uh, forget, I think it's like $40 a month you'd have to add. So if I add PS View into it, my total savings drops to $66.77 per month, or roughly $801.24 sorry, $801 per year. Still a pretty significant savings, just not as much as it was before uh, I added PS View on there. 
So certainly I'm going to make an attempt to see if I can get what I, what I get, if I can get the programming I want without actually spending that kind of money. So total savings uh, over 10 years would be $8,012.40. Also not insignificant. And you've still got other options. For example, let's say the antenna doesn't work out and you really don't want subscriptions. You don't want that monthly payment. There's other options too. If you go to Google Play or you go to Apple TV, you can actually buy an entire season of a program. Um, and you can buy it at the beginning of the season. You just download the episodes as they're released, typically a day after they're released. Uh, a typical cost for a high def version of the show, probably about $40 a season, give or take 10 bucks, depending on the show. Um, one of the advantages is there's no advertisements. Uh, and it can be cost effective if you only watch a few shows. Let's say you watch Hawaii Five O, Blue Bloods, and maybe NCIS. You buy three shows. Uh, you're at, you know, $120, $160 a year, depending on how much you pay for each one. Um, and if you can wait a little bit longer, you can supplement it with viewing older episodes on Netflix. So uh, if you can wait till the next season, like, for example, Walking Dead, if you don't want to pay extra subscription fee for AMC, and you can wait till the following year, you can watch the entire season. You can even binge watch it if you want uh, on Netflix because it typically comes out all at the same time and they're typically a season behind. So that's one option as well if you don't need to be drop-dead current with a show. Now, speaking of advertisements, um, and again, going back to you get what you pay for with different services, right? So you're paying a premium for your Dish uh, subscription, and especially you're paying a premium for your Hopper DVR. Again, I like the Hopper, and this is one of the best features of it. It allows you to skip commercials. Now, when it first came out, you could skip commercials after about 24 hours. So if you wanted to watch a show the day it came out, you had to manually fast forward through the commercials. But if you wanted to wait 24 hours, uh, the hopper would automatically skip the commercials for you, which is very, very nice. Um, that's kind of evolved. I guess they've had some kind of um, legal settlements or agreements. I think it was an agreement with certain networks to get shows uh, on their sling service uh, in return for making you wait a nominal amount of time to skip commercials. In some cases, I think it's a week now uh, before you can skip commercials. So that benefit's become less than it was when I first got the hopper. Um, with the DVR recorded on my Plex server, uh, I find that I have to fast forward uh, or use some post-processing tool. So right now I'm fast forwarding. There's another tool called an MCE Buddy, which will strip out your commercials, but that runs on a Windows machine and it's a commercial product. You do have to pay for it. And unfortunately my my Plex server is a Linux box, so I'd have to either run a virtual machine on it to run it or run it on another machine. And I'm trying to minimize my server use here. Um, there is some other scripts that you can use Handbrake. I haven't experimented with that. And if I end up going long term with this solution, I'll probably do a video on that at some point. Um, some streaming services and skinny bundles won't let you skip ads. For example, CBS All Access, it's available at two price points. At $6 a month, you're watching ads and you can't skip them. At $10 a month, they pull the ads out for you. Um, check with your PS View, check with Hulu, uh, check with uh, Sling and see what they allow. There's other articles out there that talk about what they do and do not allow for commercials. But keep in mind, that's maybe another trade-off you have to deal with. Now let's talk about time shifting. Uh, Plex promotes its live TV recording package as recorded live TV and time shifting. And it sort of is. It depends on how you want to define uh, time shifting. For example, on the Dish Hopper, I can start uh, recording a show and then I can start watching it while it's recording. So I could have started recording it 10 minutes ago and I can start watching it now and I'm 10 minutes behind and it's going to keep taping the rest of it up to the end. And that's typically what most of us think about when we talk about uh, uh, time shifting, right? Uh, I can come home a half hour late and start catching up on a show. It's something we never had with videotape, if you're old enough to remember videotapes. But once we went to DVRs, that was a great benefit. Um, and even a Microsoft Media Center PC when it was out, Windows Media Center used to allow you to do that. But unfortunately with Plex, their definition of time shifting is a little bit different. It was a little disappointing to me, quite frankly, and I'm hoping it gets better over time. But what happens is it basically records programs into a separate folder on the server. And I could probably go over that, but that's beyond the scope of this article right now. But it streams it into a separate folder. 
and it just kind of dumps it there. And then after it's done recording the show, it starts this transcoding process. And we'll talk about setting that up as well, because uh, if you don't, the files are just too big. And unless you have a super powerful server, it's going to be hard to play them. But once you start that transcoding process, uh, it converts the program into a TS file. And, well, I don't want to get too technical with it. But basically, it transcodes it, and it will eventually show up in your TV show's folder. And when I say eventually, uh, sometimes it'll show up in 10 minutes, sometimes it'll show up in 45 minutes, depending how much is going on in your server and how many shows you're recording at once. So you're not likely not going to see your show till at least uh, an hour and a half, two hours after it's been finished, or after it started playing. Um, so it's similar, I guess, to when you want to like if you use uh, CBS All Access or NBC, you're not going to see the shows until after, or a couple hours after they're done recording. Now, it's great to talk about all the savings, but if you want to actually go this route and cut the cord, there's going to be some upfront hardware costs, and I touched on them earlier. Uh, if you want to do what I'm doing, you're going to need a Plex server, so you're going to have the cost of building that server. Um, if, if you're only doing it for a DVR, there's probably better options I'll talk about a little bit later in this video. Uh, but if you already have a Plex server, certainly go ahead and utilize that. So for me, there was no additional costs, but I actually increased the value of my Plex server uh, or my Unraid 6 setup. So Plex was the, it's a docker that runs on it. Uh, some smart TVs have Plex and other streaming services built in, so you don't have to spend anything extra on that. You can just immediately uh, connect to your server and start using it. Uh, for others, you might need to leverage um, some kind of set-top box, whether it's a PS3, PS4, and you can typically pick up PS3s if you're only going to use it for this for fairly inexpensive at this point. Uh, you can go to Walmart, get a Roku box. You can order an Amazon Fire TV. Um, just remember, for every TV that you want to stream off of your Plex server, you're going to need one of these boxes. Um, the thing is, you're going to have a return on investment by a monthly reduced programming fee. So let's say you spend $400 on boxes, but you're saving $150 a month. It's not going to take you too long to see um, the benefit in that investment. Now, as I was mentioning, if you don't already have an Unraid 6 server or a Plex server, uh, I don't know if I'd suggest building one just for this application, especially if you haven't been using it to stream programs throughout your house already. There's other options out there. One such option is something called a Tableau. It's an over-the-air DVR. It costs you approximately $260 to $450. Uh, if you don't have a Plex server, it's a good alternative. Monthly subscription for the programming is $5, same as Plex. But one thing that makes it different from the HD Home Run box that I'm using along with my Plex server is it's a self-contained unit. You don't need to necessarily have another computer for recording. So it sits in your network and you can stream from that box. Now I haven't tried the Tableau yet. Uh, I don't really have a need to. But if my um, solution with the HD Home Run and the antenna ends up failing on me, that may be something I look at. Now, one other option that's out there, and it's uh, kind of going old school, if you remember the days when uh, these guys invented the DVR, basically. The TiVo has got a DVR out there, and the one that I looked at that seems to fit this application well is something called uh, the Romeo, uh, and it's an over-the-air DVR. Um, so they started as sort of uh, something that would tape off of tape. I'm going old school with that, too. Something that used to record off of cable, uh, and then they got into, um, into bed with DirecTV, and they were using them for a while. And now they're doing antenna stuff, and they still have cable box as well. But they basically invented the time-shifting DVR. They're still around. Uh, they've got a commercial skipping technology called Skip Mode, and this is basically their equivalent of the Hopper. Uh, it's got single box integration with streaming services, which is uh, Netflix and Amazon. So you, I was talking about the ease of use. Here you got a one box that can record all of your over-the-air broadcasts in addition to having the same remote and the same access to your Netflix and Amazon shows. Uh, it attaches to a TV. It's got a real radio frequency remote. So unlike these IR remotes, you can actually shove this thing off in a closet and still be able to access it using your remote control using radio frequencies. Um, Similar to the Hopper DVR, you've got TiVo Minis. So if I have multiple TVs in my house, I can scatter these TiVo Minis throughout the house. 
and they can communicate with my TiVo over the air DVR and stream programs that I've previously recorded. Uh, now, one thing I noted, and I haven't quite figured out how I'd make this work yet, is the antenna connects directly to the TiVo. And the thing is, with the HD Home Run, I could put that anywhere I need to near the antenna location. So in my house, if I put the antenna on one side of my house, I get absolutely no signal. I put it on the other side of the house, I get really good signal. Unfortunately, where the TiVo box would have to go, the one of two locations where I would need it, um, neither one is ideal for an antenna. So I'd have an interesting cable run and I'd probably have to have an increased expense for an outdoor antenna and figuring out how to get the cable to the box. So that's something to consider. Um, the other thing to consider is it tends to be a little bit more expensive than some of the other solutions I've had here, particularly if you have your own Plex server. Uh, it runs about $400, but one thing TiVo's done is originally they were releasing this thing really cheap and charging $15 a month for their service, and I got some criticism for that. Um, it's just a different model, right? But for those of us that are cord cutting, we probably don't want subscriptions if we don't have to. So what they did is they bumped up the price of your box and basically built in what they felt was a reasonable profit margin. And then there's no monthly fees. So you got free free programming guides um, forever. And then I guess their idea is you'll buy the TiVo minis off of them and maybe future products. But it's a one-time expense and it's free and it integrates with all your products. It's probably the easiest one to use. And if I end up going this route with a fully integrated um, DVR, uh, TiVo is probably the one I would look at if I can't get my Plex server to work the way I want it to. So some lessons learned so far in this project, and I'm a couple weeks into it. Uh, one, if you live near a major city or even a reasonably sized suburb, so I'm in um, a suburb to the northeast of Atlanta, uh, you have a lot of HD signals that are crystal clear and plenty fill. Uh, even an indoor antenna, I got a $40 RCA antenna, um, works great. The actual picture quality is better than what I get off satellite. Um, the second lesson learned is you absolutely will miss the ease of use of your cable satellite subscription. So even my little time working with the antenna in the Plex server, I do find it's more complicated and has some issues. The guide on the Plex server is positively horrible. Uh, it doesn't show you dates, times. It shows you what's playing now, what's coming up soon. And you can certainly search for um, programs and you hope you find it. Uh, but it's not as nice as a grid that shows you what's coming on now and uh, in the near future. Um, but in spite of all that, you're going to love the potential cost savings. Okay, so, and that's kind of what's driving this for me. It's uh, I'm a frugal guy. I love the dish. I think it's a quality product. But everything else is going up in price. And like the rest of the country, salaries aren't going up as what they used to either. And I got kids going to college. It's a nice way to be able to save some money. Um... So that's a big plus. The other thing I've learned is from working with the Plex server, and I'll, I'll make a separate video on, on this later. I was going to try to combine it in one, but this is already getting kind of long, is uh, the Plex recording is not very reliable yet. Uh, so, for example, I've had a couple times where I went to tape a show and there's transcoding errors. It's hit or miss. Um, I'm getting about 70 to 80% of the shows I asked to tape, tape sometimes two and three at a time over the tuner and it works great other times a single show could be going to tape but it just dies and it records two minutes of it or it doesn't record at all and it just says transcoding error it doesn't really give you any clue as to why um, so it's not the most reliable thing in the world um, as i mentioned earlier uh, the tv programming guide is positively horrible um, search is the best way you can find stuff the other thing I noticed also is the HD Home Run Box actually comes with its own DVR software. Now, out of the box, the software you download is going to let you view live programming. If you want to uh, tape it, you got to pay a subscription. I forget how much it is. I think it's like $35 a year. It runs on Windows. It looks like a decent option. It's got a decent TV guide, but it's got to run on um, it's got to run on a Windows box. So I would either need to dedicate a separate machine to doing that. Um, or run it in a virtual machine. Uh, it does not allow any remote streaming like Plex does, uh, but you could tape it, and I believe it's in an open format, and copy it to your Plex server if you want more manual steps. Um, I haven't tried it yet, mostly because they don't have a trial version, and I may do that at some point. Uh, again, depends on how this Plex server works out. I'm 50-50 with if this uh, Plex Live TV thing is gonna be a good substitute or if I'm gonna have to actually go with a streaming service. 
and I'll update on that in a few weeks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just the start of this project. Um, just my first impressions with trying to cut the cord, uh, save a little money, um, pros and cons. I mean, there's significant savings to be had here. Just depends on how much you're willing to give up. Um, again, the thing is, if the whole family was actually using the dish hopper in this house, this would be a no-brainer. Keep it and use it. But I'm literally the only one that watches it. The kids uh, use Netflix. Um, it's just me, and I use it for sports. Now, I did look. Most of the sports I watch, I can get over a local broadcast. So I'm not somebody that's got the direct TV uh, Sunday ticket and spends all day watching uh, football on Sundays. I do like my Falcons game. They're local. I can watch them. Uh, Atlanta United soccer. I got season tickets. I go down and watch that uh, at the stadium. Um, baseball, so many different ways you can do that. Uh, MLB.tv, I can stream that. So sports are becoming far, far less of an issue. I'm sort of a news junkie, um, but news is getting kind of depressing lately, and there's ways you can stream that as well. Uh, so, and I did look. Most of the shows I watch are either on CBS or Netflix. Um, occasionally I can get a good movie or something on Amazon Video. Um, so I start to wonder, why am I spending this kind of money? So, But again, um, the issues I've had so far with the Plex server have not been perfect. They've had... It's not the ideal time-shifting platform. Um, it's recording has been a bit spotty, and I'm going to revisit this in a few weeks and let you know how that goes. Basically, my plan right now is I've got this set up, and I've got a few months. Um, I think two or three months is what I, I planned out for this project to see how well it goes. So in two or three months, I'm either going to say, you know what, this isn't working out. I'm going to stick with Dish, or I'm going to switch to a streaming service like PS View. Or I'm going to say, you know what, this antenna thing's working out, and I think I, the few things I need to get off the air, I can do that. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But this is the start of this project. I'd love to hear your experience with this cord cutting um, and what you've done. Or did you just say, screw it, let's get rid of broadcast TV altogether. And if it's on streaming, I watch it. If it's not, I don't watch it. So I guess what I'm trying to do is just replace what I'm already watching on the broadcast, so the prime time shows and whatnot. The one thing Dish does do, which is nice, is it automatically records every primetime show. So even if you don't know you want to watch it, you can just sit back and, oh, there's nothing on the DVR. Let's look and see what was on primetime. Oh, I've never seen that. Jump into the show and see if see if you like it. So uh, I'm going to put a link to the products mentioned uh, down below um, to help you get started. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put some pictures of the product boxes uh, throughout this video. And again, I'm looking forward to feedback. And I'll make a second part of this video with how to use the Plex server and eventually a third part with uh, the results of what I ended up finally doing. Um, so this is Mike, and talk to you soon. Bye.